drugs like Ritalin and Adderall and Focalin and Concerta have a whole range of devastating effects. We can far more easily show how bad they are than how good they are. First of all, they all suppress growth. And they do it not just by spoiling appetite like some doctors think, they do it by suppressing normal growth hormone cycles. That means the entire growth process of the child is disrupted by stimulants. So much so that if you do a blood test and the hormonal levels of growth hormone are normal, the kid's not taking this drug. Now, that means every organ in the body, including the brain, is not growing normally in any child taking these drugs. Now, some parents will say, but my kid's 5'10". That doesn't prove anything. Maybe your kid was going to be 6'4". The point is that we know from systematic studies, without a doubt anymore, that these drugs suppress overall human growth. Now, they're also highly addictive. They're in Schedule Two of the DEA, which is reserved for the drugs that are the most addictive in medicine. They're in the same category, according to the DEA, as morphine, as cocaine. Now, that not only means these drugs are addictive, that also means that these drugs are heavily impacting on the brain. If a drug is going to addict you, it's changing the brain. And studies in animals show persistent and probably permanent damage from drugs like Adderall and Ritalin, the amphetamines and methylphenidate. They cause drastic biochemical changes that are long range. In addition to these physical effects, these drugs are devastating from the psychiatric viewpoint. If you read the label for this drug, it'll tell you don't give this medication to a child who's agitated or anxious. And yet, some doctors treat agitation and anxiety with these drugs. Many children become depressed on these drugs. Many, many children. They also develop insomnia and anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder on these drugs. Now, your average pediatrician or internist or psychiatrist doesn't know or really isn't interested in all these side effects. Instead of recognizing that these are drug effects like apathy and anxiety and depression and even suicidality and insomnia, instead of recognizing this, the average doctor attributes it to the child's problems. So let's say you start your child on Ritalin or Adderall because you want your kid to get better grades. Then your kid gets insomnia, so the doctor puts the child on a some sort of drug, maybe clonidine, that should never be given to children and never given to them with Adderall or Ritalin because it causes heart attacks, but the doc does it anyway. Now the kid's on two psychiatric drugs. He's on the sleeping medication. He's on the stimulant medication, which is causing apathy and indifference. And the kid is now looking depressed, so he gets put on an antidepressant. The doc says, oh, that black label warning that the antidepressants got suicidality, that's just something the drug companies put on there. It doesn't mean anything. Doc doesn't know that there's such powerful evidence, statistical evidence, for the antidepressants causing suicidal behavior in kids that the FDA and the drug companies were forced to put the black label warning. So now we've got the kid on three or four drugs that are making him crazy. By the time I get to see him, this child may be on five psychiatric drugs because now he's on an antipsychotic drug because psychiatric drugs make kids crazy. Stimulant drugs cause psychosis. And you put two or three together and you've really got serious problems. 